This is going to be a brief video about the Yezu FTR5410 repeater that I did a video on earlier. I've now finished the project and I'm using an SI5351 clock module that's controlled by an Arduino Nano and um, the unit's operating now and I have it uh, connected up so I'm going to do a demonstration on that so stand by this is the original setup I used with the Arduino Nano and the SI5351 clock module I wired up another one here and this is an important step you need to calibrate the oscillator in the module and you do that in software and luckily um, Jason Mildrum another fellow that is very good at writing programs wrote a calibration procedure to do just that now I've uh, put that on the computer here I've uploaded it and what you do is um, you use the program to generate a calibration figure that you enter into your uh, into your program that you run and that will allow for uh, your clock oscillator to be calibrated. This calibration sketch generates 10 megahertz on clock zero and I have clock zero connected up to a frequency counter and as you can see it's reading about 1.7 kilohertz too high so I need to lower that down so it reads exactly 10 megahertz and then I will be able to apply a calibration figure here. Now to do that you start out here okay I'm 1.7 kilohertz high so I want to drop it by 1 kilohertz so if I hit the letter L in the serial monitor here now notice that now it's reading 700 cycles high so I'm gonna drop the hundreds of Hertz down 700 Hertz and I do that K is the figure I use down K drops a hundred so what I'll do is I will hit K enter that dropped it to 600 Hertz high I'm going to do it again. K, enter. And that dropped it another 100 hertz. So I'm going to do that five more times. Okay, now it shows that I'm three cycles too high. So looking in the program, one cycle, the letter H should drop it one cycle which it did. The letter H again should drop at one cycle which it did. Hit the letter H again now I'm right on 10 megahertz. Okay I'm done now so I'm going to hit the letter Q and enter. I ran the calibration routine and now 32.92.92 which is what I want on clock 1 and on clock 0 I got 47.416 so that verifies that this is working like I said this was the original one I used you have to run the calibration routine for each. I don't know how stable the crystal is on this uh, clock module. So you actually need to calibrate it using the calibration routine running on the Arduino here. And I'm sure that each individual clock module is going to vary somewhat. So luckily you can calibrate it by running the uh, calibration example. Here's the completed assembly. I guess you'd call it Mod 2. And it's just waiting for a very expensive custom shielded enclosure. Ooh, I hope my oscillator doesn't drift. 
Here's the board before it's put into its custom made enclosure. Here's the Arduino Nano. Here's the SI5351 clock module. Here's the low pass filter for the receiver section and the low pass filter for the transmitter. And of course, the leads come out here into SMA connectors. Although I put BNCs on the rig, but I can. I can change these SMAs to BNCs pretty easy. So, And then I put a couple little shields in here to try to help isolate the units together. So, the next step will be to put it in its enclosure and then uh, fire it up. So, stand by. And here's the final product in its home. And Frosty, I can't tell if he's smiling or not. I think that's his nose. Anyway, opening the lid, there's the unit. And if you follow the output leads, they come over here. And I've got the receive coming in through this BNC connector. And the transmit injection coming in here. The receive is injected at this point, which I'll show on the schematic in a minute. The transmit comes in, is injected at this point in the transmitter chain, and I'll show that point on the schematic in a second here. The, the USB cable here will plug into a computer to program it, and then after you program it, all I have to do is plug in a 5 volt power supply, and then uh, the unit should take off. Right now I've got it programmed for two uh, separate frequencies for the repeater and then put in an output frequency. When you want to program it you just remove the USB connector from the power supply. Plug it into a computer and it runs off the 5 volt from the computer. Here's the schematic of the receiver section and I injected the receive oscillator frequency in at this point here C30 and R11 at the junction or T01 I injected that here between here and ground this is the oscillator transistor which now basically it's just an extra buffer um, the outputs taken across the emitter here and then applied to the first tripler here and the second tripler so this is where the receive is injected. Here's the schematic of the transmitter. I injected the transmit frequency from the oscillator at this point here. The input to this uh, buffer. I actually um, connected it at the top of uh, R08 here, which is, is the base of this transistor, Q02. And then it follows the, the doublers and then the final tripler. I was concerned about the quality of this signal coming in here, but I found that after it goes through the two doublers and the tripler, um, since they're tuned to harmonics anyway, it, it ended up pretty pretty pure at, out at this end here so it wasn't as big a factor as I thought it would be. I'm still a little concerned about the stability of the clock oscillator the the SI5351 crystal on that board as long as I keep the temperature stable hopefully it'll be okay. The nice thing is I can check it from time to time and, and if I have to I can uh, I can move the frequency if I have to do that and I'll probably have to change frequencies I still don't know which uh, frequency pair I'm going to use here since I'm not sure if I'll be interfering with any coordinated repeaters which will not happen I'll have to find an unused frequency pair. Next, um, next I'll do a demonstration of the final system with everything connected together so stand by for that. Okay I have the unit back together I have the frequency reference over here that'll control the repeater system 
and it's on. I've got a repeater transmitter connected to a dummy load and a small little whip antenna on the back here. And in the mic position, you can see here you got power, transmit, and busy. With this switch in the mic position, you can use this as a regular transceiver. Testing. Test, test one, two, three, test one, two. A little feedback. Test one, two. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three. Okay, now I'm going to put the mic repeater switch in the repeater position here. Now this will function as a repeater. It'll receive on one frequency and transmit on the other. And when I key it now, you'll see the transmit light come on. Test, one, two, three, test, one, two, three. And I have a receiver over in my radio room that um, is picking up the output frequency on 443.150. I'm transmitting on 448.15 and I'm receiving in the other room on 443.15. In my radio room, I have a scanner that's connected to a disc going on the roof. And that scanner is there. You can see the lit up. So now I'm going to transmit it on 448.150, and that receiver will pick up the output of the repeater on 143.150. Testing, 123, test, 123, test. Hello, hello, test, 12. So anyway, that's it for uh, this project. Uh, I still have to get my duplexers and tune them, and then uh, I'll put this thing on the air. I still have to figure out which frequencies I'm going to use that I won't interfere with another repeater, that is. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this short revisit to this project. And anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.